We heard a missile alert siren, so we ran to the safe room. Suddenly, we got a message from another kibbutz saying, there's a terrorist infiltration. You need to lock all of the doors. We thought it would take one or two hours tops. We kept waiting, and nothing happened. Around 8 a.m., we heard terrorists knocking on the door. They tried to get in. They couldn't get inside the house through the doors, so they climbed on a stand outside the house and came in through the bathroom window. Then they started to knock on the safe room door. They yelled in Arabic, open the door. My father yelled at them, go. And then suddenly we heard them shooting at the door. My brother was wounded. His arm was crushed. They sensed where my dad was standing and fired at him. Meanwhile, my mother and I treated my brother and tried to stop his bleeding. My dad collapsed. They continued to try opening the door, but they couldn't because the door of the safe room is automatically locked when someone shoots at it. Then they set a closet next to the safe room on fire. The smoke from the fire entered our safe room through the bullet holes in the door. We couldn't breathe. We thought we were going to faint. Then I heard they were trying to open the window. They managed to open the window. They shot the window and opened it. They threw three hand grenades into the safe room. Two of the grenades exploded. My mom and I were wounded. They continued to fire. My mom got shot. I took off my shirt and tried to stop the bleeding. We also treated my brother. But we couldn't stop my mother's bleeding because we didn't know where she'd been shot. We kept moving around in the safe room. I called several people, like the emergency unit and the people of Kibbutz Be'eri. The IDF and emergency first responders told us, there is nothing we can do. We can't get inside your kibbutz. The only thing you can do is play dead. We kept hearing the terrorists firing and shouting. They continued to set our house on fire. At 3 p.m., my mother started to choke. Everyone else was fainting, and I tried to wake them up over and over again. At a certain point, my mother stopped breathing. We felt that she became cold, and that was it. We felt that we were getting burned. I told my brother to put his legs up because he was losing blood. He started to gurgle. We told him, don't shout, Carmel, don't shout. If they know we're alive, they'll either kill us or kidnap us. I tried to give him CPR, but my father told me, forget him. Now let's focus on saving ourselves. I yelled to my dad, don't die, don't leave us alone. At around 6 p.m., a few people from the kibbutz texted me and said that we're going to hear a very loud boom. It's an Israeli tank that will bomb our neighbor's home and get inside our home to rescue us through the wall. Then I heard this loud explosion. We heard people inside the house. We heard someone talking in Hebrew, but with an Arabic accent. My father told them to come through the window, that the window was open. I told them they could be terrorists. They may be fooling us. He said it doesn't matter. They came with flashlights and we saw that they were IDF soldiers. They said, what a massacre. I told them, please come and lift me up. I can't move. They told me that they couldn't get through the window because they had too much equipment. I managed to bring myself up and get to the window. They took me out and opened the door. We went outside and saw that the entire neighborhood was on fire. They separated me and my dad and took us to Netivot, where there is a special unit.